friends, I'm Carrie Ann with Salty and Bright, and in today's video, I will be talking about drawing closer to God. Stay till the end of the video to learn the keys of drawing closer to God and hearing one of my personal stories of when I heard God the clearest. Be sure to share this video, like it, and comment on how you draw closer to God. So let's get into it. privilege um, to be here and sharing, you know, on the Draw Closer to God platform. Um, I am among some very wonderful, talented, gifted people of God, and I'm just so happy that I am invited to the table. <laughs> but, you know, God is so faithful and and, you know, the more I get into it, the more you'll understand my excitement, my enthusiasm to share just how wonderful God is. I know you guys know. So today we're, you know, we're talking about drawing closer to God. So tonight I'm going to share the keys for drawing closer to God. And, and you know, as Minister Stacy, she shared that I will be talking about my personal experience as I go through. But, you know, there's a difference between knowing somebody or knowing about somebody, right? I remember growing up in Jamaica, every whenever the queen would come, because I went to Wilma's and there was one year the queen, the, the motorcade was passing right by the school. Everybody ran up to the gate and everybody looking because they wanted to see the queen. And all we saw was the window how you just see a white glove. And so everybody in the world, before she passed, they, everybody knew there was a queen of England. We knew that the queen visited Jamaica many times, right? So we knew of this royalty that would visit. We knew of her but we didn't know her, right? Some people got to glimpse her, but even glimpsing her was not the same as if we knew her personally. We have a King of Kings and a Lord of Lords that we hear about all the time, right? Not only that we read about him in the Bible, we hear other people's experience about their time with the King of Kings. But do we know him for ourselves? Do we, can we say, I know God for myself or are we just going off of what the pastor say or what sister so-and-so say are we getting to know God for ourselves? right there was a time when I went through a divorce and I have two boys I got remarried new hubby said I want us to have a house for ourselves you know it is a that thing he didn't want me to have my own he wanted something for us to share I said okay so we sold my house and we saw a house that we wanted to move into sometimes in between selling of one house and getting through into the other house the timing doesn't always mesh perfectly but in this particular circumstance the bank did not approve us to move into the next house so sell the old house don't have the means to move into the new house. So we ended up going to um, an extended stay. So it's like you pay week by week. It's not even a place you, you pay for the month. You, you, it's so temporary that you, you, you're just paying week by week. So I was technically homeless for this time period. And I remember being in the hotel room and I'm like, what, you know, I as far as I know, I, there's nothing that I did. I don't understand what is going on. I don't understand why I'm in this situation, why I'm homeless right now. And, and the, Holy, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, Carrie, I want you to know that you're going to be in this situation for 40 days. And when he said 40 days, I remember there's a significance about the number 40 in the Bible. And I said, for 40 days? And he said, yes. He said, and, I, and Carrie, I want you to fast for three days. So I don't have a problem with fasting, right? God said fast, let's do it. The only thing is, right, that week at work, they were going to be catering lunch every single day that week. I said, God, you sure is this week you want me to fast? <laughs> you sure you don't want me to fast next week? We don't have the lunches, <laughs> the free lunch every day. Take care, I want you to fast for three days this week. And when you do that, at 40 days, you will not be in this place. I said, all right, God, 
this is what she's and he actually told me that the reason why i was here was because of disobedience he didn't say you're disobedient or your husband disobedient you just say because of disobedience you're here but for 40 days and i want you to fast for three days i said all right god all right all right so fast for the three days and and you know i really for me to hear god that clearly to really have a conversation with him i can't say throughout my life i have it that easy I don't have it like that. And I was like, God, I don't want to be out in the cold every time we have this conversation. I don't want it to be like this when I'm down and out is when I'm hearing you the clearest. I want to hear you clear every day. So after the 40 days, God worked it out. Honestly, God worked it out. The house that I'm in now, and I've been here, I moved in in 2019. But how God worked it out, while the bank was situating themselves, the people who owned the house said, we know that this house belongs to this family. We know it belongs to you. So we will rent it to you until the bank sought out the funding. And then when the bank sought out the funding, then it can be sold. And that was strictly God, because people don't just have people random in the house like that when they're trying to sell it when they could be getting other buyers. They say, well, we're going to rent it to you until your bank is ready to finance it because we believe this house is yours. I was like, what? But God is just so awesome. You know, in Jeremiah 32, 27, it says, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for our God? There is nothing too hard for him. And we just have to believe. So one of the keys to drawing closer to God is faith. Now Hebrews 11.6 lets us know that without faith, it is impossible for us to please God. When you want to get close to somebody, anybody, any relationship that you're in, you want to get to know what that person likes. You can gain favor with that person. You want to know what pleases that person if you know that the person gonna be angry if you do a certain thing or if you say a certain thing then you're going to avoid saying certain things and doing th certain things because you want to be closer to that person we are made in the image and likeness of god so there are lots of similarities in the way we operate and the way god operates now it's not all the same because god's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts but in terms of characteristics and ways, if we want to get to know somebody, we want to know what they like, what they don't like. Now, in Hebrews, it's telling us that it's impossible to please God without faith. So if we know that if we don't have faith, we can't please God, right? We want to draw closer to God. We're trying to be closer to God. We have to have faith because faith pleases Him. And we know continuing that verse it says for he that cometh to god must believe that he is so if we are going to come to god we must believe that god actually exists not only that he exists but that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him so the key in this particular verse hebrews eleven six, one we need faith because without faith, we cannot. It is impossible. We cannot please God without faith. But not only that, we need to believe that He is. Not only that He exists, but that He is a rewarder. So He's going to reward us. But reward us for what? Reward who? He's going to reward those who diligently seek Him. Now the key there in drawing closer to God is to have faith and to diligently seek Him. I am in this season right now, and I believe that's one of the reasons why I'm here, that I am diligently seeking Him. See, Hebrews 11.1 1 lets us know that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So if you can see it, you don't have to believe for it is not faith, because you can see it. But if, we have to, if there's no evidence of it at all, we're not seeing it with our natural eyes and we want it to happen, then we have to activate our faith. But how do you activate your faith? 
you know, sometimes we, we pray and I would say, God, can you give me more faith? Or in the instance where the father was saying, help my unbelief, right? How do we increase our faith? It says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we have to dive into the word. We have to meditate on the word of God. Now the word of God is living and breathing. So it's not that you just read the Bible, you open it, you read a verse and you close it. Reading the Bible, it, it's, it's our spiritual food. It is bread. The word of God is bread. That in John it said that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is the word of God. And Jesus said that I am the bread of life. So Jesus is the bread of life. So when you read your Bible, you are feeding your spirit the bread of life. And when you take it in, you're taking in that information and it is, it is, that is one way that it increases your faith because it's now becoming a part of you. When you're eating that bread, it becomes a part of you. One, we need faith. Two, we need to believe that God exists. And three, we need to get into the word through faith. Faith, we, we increase our faith by hearing the word of God. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, just a reminder to like this video, share it with your friends, and comment on the techniques that you use to draw closer to God. If you want more content on how to have a successful Christian walk, click the next video. Thanks, friends.